Hello, my name is Kansen Chu, represent the Assembly District 25. Thank you so much for taking your time and joining us this morning. We got some excellent speakers. Um, I will introduce them uh, later, uh, but there's some housekeeping items here. I will, first, I want to uh, I wish all of you are well and safe at home. This uh, COVID-19 pandemic definitely caused a lot of uh, physical, financial, and mental stress to so many of us. This is a really an, a, a, a recession that we're also facing. As a former restaurant owner, I know how much uh, do you guys are uh, uh, enduring right now. And also, uh, I know that the small business is actually contributing uh, 60 to 70% of our local economy. So I also want to thank you for, uh, for what you've been doing and uh, hand, hanging on so we'll be able to get over this together. And today's town hall will provide information about federal, state, and local resources that are available to small businesses and during this pandemic and also answer any questions you may have. We're going to do our best to answer all your questions, but if, uh, if you, or you can comment on the Facebook Live or click on the, on, on the Google link in the chat or email the questions to assemblymember.2 at assembly.ca.gov. We'll have that on the screen uh, later. And we're also your question following the presentation, but you can submit your questions at any point during this town hall. You're also connected uh, to my office or any of the presenters after the town hall to ask any questions that you may have. And uh, today we have a very, very honor to have our state treasurer Fiona Ma with us. And together, she, she also brought a team of experts to do, to, to do the presentation and ask, uh, answer any questions that you may have. You know, um, I'm so grateful to uh, Treasurer Ma for taking this time to join us. This is the second time this year, and I know how busy she is We're trying to lead the California for a, a recovery from this uh, unprecedented uh, recession. So uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Fiona Ma. And also we have two real dynamic speakers. I have known them for a long, long, long time, maybe over 20 years. One was a uh, uh, Dennis King and also uh, Margaret Jackson. They were from the uh, uh, local small business development center. SBDC, but their work actually helping with the small business started long, 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 long time ago. Dennis has been, try all, all the years that I know him, trying to put to, to get all the uh, small chambers and ethnic chambers together for the single purpose of uh, helping those, those small business owner and to improve the life of our uh, community. And Margaret Jackson has a talk show, uh, Business on the Edge. I have the honor to be on the talk show uh, for many, many times. She was also very instrumental of getting this business, uh, various business associations started. So without further ado, please um, join me and welcome our state treasurer, Fiona Ma. Thank you very much, Kansen. Um Thank you for hosting this. We've done about 60 different webinars to date uh, since the governor's stay at home order. And so we have uh, talked to many, many groups around the state and different industries and different questions depending on when the webinar is and the due dates and the stimulus packages. So um, I think it's um, always a good time to do these webinars, especially for small businesses. I mess myself started uh, my public service career as a CPA with my own uh, business. And I had a lot of small business clients and understood very quickly how hard it is to do business 
even though small businesses are the backbone of our economy, it is so difficult to, you know, try to, you know, keep your doors open, uh, keep your employees, keep your constituents or your customers happy. And then you have all of these different government agencies that want you to do this and that and nothing is timed and the information is really difficult to follow. So what my external affairs team has done during this pandemic is to pivot from in-person free seminars uh, to these types of seminars. And they've also been updating, creating and updating real time uh, resources for small businesses, individuals, nonprofits, seniors, tax relief, and also food access. So those are on my website, www.treasure.ca.gov. And you will see two different buttons. One is our official COVID-19 uh, state website that has all of the facts and figures and executive orders and pronouncements. So we encourage people to log in there for the latest uh, at the state. And then the other button is my COVID-19 resource guides. And again, they are updated in real time. A lot of times people apply for a program and they don't hear back. Well, that's because the money is gone, but nobody tells the applicants that the money is gone. So people are just waiting and wondering and then they start calling our office, for example, and we have set up a dedicated email, and that is askfiona at treasure.ca.gov. And we encourage anyone who has any questions or hasn't heard about a program to reach out to us. It just happened last week. Uh, I had a dentist friend who applied, and she says, I've been waiting. I had Catherine call, and they said, oh, the money's all gone. Nobody called her, so she's been waiting. So again, ask Fiona at treasure.ca.gov and Catherine Asprey is amazing at constituent services and we'll get back to everyone uh, with your questions. Um, also, I think many people know that the extra $600 of unemployment benefits from the federal uh, level has expired. Uh, and so that means that we're probably gonna see a lot more people going back to work or looking for work. But my concern is as a small business, some of them have closed permanently. Where are people gonna find work? And so it is important that uh, we get as many resources out there. And the state of California has entered into a public private partnership uh, with private companies that are looking for workers. There's about 100,000 different opportunities for people who are looking for work. And that website is uh, www.onwardca.org. And I know my team is going to be typing uh, all of these um, resources into your chat box. Um, we also work very closely with the SBDCs. And I know that Dennis is, is on, and I'm sure he's going to be answering a lot of the questions, perhaps from the federal uh, government, the stimulus packages, and what's perhaps to come through the HEROES Act, as well as the new infrastructure bill. So I will not touch on that at this moment, but I will stay on at the end in case there are questions uh, that people have at the state level that I can chime in on. And before I uh, turn it over back to you, Kansen, I just want to remind people the importance of filling out our census forms. Earlier in April, we got $9.2 billion in aid from the federal government based on the number of people we counted 10 years ago. And this year is our count. So for every person that is not counted, we will lose $1,000 uh, per person over the next 10 years in federal support. So our communities, Canton, as you know, API communities, we are one of the hardest to reach communities just because of either mistrust of government or uh, language access. Nobody is going to come knock on your door this time and explain the program and sign you up. So we really want people to please help and get your households signed up. The deadline has been extended to October 31st, I believe. So there is still time. And that website is www.my2020census.com. Gov. It is so important to make sure that we get all of our fair share of federal resources for all the programs and services. So I thank you, Kansan. I will stay on till the very end in case 
you have more questions for me, but again, feel free to use us as a resource. We are there to help you like Canson. We wanna make sure that everybody stays safe and can uh, succeed even in this very, very tough environment. So thank you, Canson. All right, thank you, uh, Treasurer Mar. Yeah, you touched some uh, very important issues uh, regarding to the $600 uh, uh, unemployment. The legislature under the leadership of our uh, speaker, Randa, were exploring the way to uh, come up with some money to uh, help out uh, uh, people, especially uh, uh, in a higher cost living area. No way they'd be able to survive with uh, uh, their, uh, uh, on their unemployment benefits only. And we also understand that the EDD has a big backlog and we're, we're working very, very hard to uh, solve that problem. So people be able to at least get their unemployment uh, uh, checked. And the census, I just cannot um, uh, over emphasize the importance of the census. You know, we uh, so much uh, money, education, transportation, healthcare are all depending on our big brothers, uh, our uncles, and and and, and Washington D.C., and would your would any everybody need to be counted? You know, and and that's the very um, uh, confidential information. So we definitely will not release to any uh, agencies like ICE or whatever you, uh, immigration offices. So it's a very safe way to 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 be counted and to, to help us to bring some resources from the, uh, the federal government, which set the state California's biggest contributor to, 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 to their war chest, right? And, right. and uh, we, we need to get our fair, fair share back right. from the federal government. So with exactly. that, uh, uh, Treasurer Ma, would you please introduce your uh, uh, staff? They, they okay. will be speaking okay um we have uh janie davis uh who's going to talk about our cal cap for small business program we have miriam joffe block uh who will be talking about some of our incentive programs jonathan herrera uh, is going to talk about our cal savers program a important tool for small businesses and then you will have Margaret Jackson and Dennis King of the SBDC. So Janie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Treasurer. And thank you, Assembly Member Ken Shu, for having us today. We appreciate this opportunity to um, be part of this town hall and to share information about our CalCap program. Um, I'm, as the Treasurer mentioned, um, we are um, part of the State Treasurer's Office. We, our CalCap program was created in 1994 and for the purpose of supporting small businesses, including nonprofits, um, by facilitating banks and other financial institutions to make loans to small businesses. Um, the CalCap program is a loan loss reserve program, which provides lenders with an opportunity to get up to 100% coverage should there be a loan default. Um, the maximum loan amount in the program is $5 million, and the maximum that can be enrolled in the program is $2.5 million. Um, we provide um, a little bit of extra support for businesses that are impacted by high unemployment, which we're seeing right now as an as a impact of the recession, and also those directly impacted by COVID-19. So there's a, a little extra bonus to the um, the loan loss reserves for businesses that, uh, um, that indicate, that certify that they've been impacted by COVID-19. Um, we work directly with lenders. We have lenders enrolled in the program. Um, the lenders are set their own terms and conditions pursuant to their prudent underwriting policies. We don't, um, we don't drive that. We encourage the lenders to work with each of, of the borrowers individually and look at their credit situations and see how they can best help them with us providing the um, loan loss reserve coverage on the backside. Um, the, um, I, as I mentioned, we do work with lenders. I provided our lender list here. Um, there's a, if, you, if you go to this link, it's a list of the lenders enrolled in the CalCap for Small Business Program. There's also a, um, 
I, you know, also part of our, our lender list here is um, we have we have them listed in or not in any specific order. You'll see that they are um, their addresses are there, their websites are there, but a lot of our lenders lend statewide. So if it looks like there's a lender that might not be from the Bay Area, I know there are some, um, but those lenders, most of the lenders do lend statewide. So I just like to to point that out. And additionally. Um, if there's lenders that the, the small businesses work with and are comfortable working with on a regular basis, we, are, we encourage those lenders to reach out to us. And um, it's very easy to enroll in our program and we can work with them to enroll them, to enroll loans in the program. And we, get, we provide a training and an education program for them as well. So um, we're looking for new lenders. We're happy to work to, um, train them and work with them and provide them information on the program. Next slide. Okay, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our collateral support program, which is kind of a sister program to our CalCap for Small Business program. And this is a little bit different. It's not a loan loss reserve model, but it does pledge to cover um, the collateral shortfall of a loan in order for the business to be able to get a loan that they might not be able to get. Um, these tend to be larger loans. The minimum um, amount in this program is $50,000, million, $50, excuse me, and the, the maximum is $20 million for under collateralized loans. As I mentioned in the prior, uh, in our CalCap for Small Business program, we provide extra support um, in the collateral support program for before I mentioned for um, businesses impacted by COVID-19 and businesses and communities with high unemployment. Additionally, in the collateral support program, we provide a little bit of extra um, cash support for green businesses or businesses, um, manufacturing businesses manufacturing businesses or loans that are on the smaller side, like $50,000 to $250,000. Um, the maximum amount of support that we provide in the collateral support program is $2.5 million per loan per borrower. And um, I've, in, I've provided here um, uh, the link to our lender list. Again, I encourage you to, to um, visit this link if you to, to um, reach out to our lenders. They're, um, they're not, we have a little, there's a little different listing for um, the, the collateral support program than there is for the, um, the CalCal for Small Business program, because some of these lenders just um, have a different specialty or they work with different types of borrowers. So I do encourage you to reach out to these lenders. Um, they're very knowledgeable about the program and they, they're really helpful in, in helping to determine which program might be best for you, whether it be the CalCap for Small Business or the Collateral Support Program. Next slide, please. Um, I provided my contact information here. Um, I'm Janie Davis. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the California Pollution Control Financing Authority, part of the State Treasurer's Office. Here's my direct email address and my phone number. Um, I've also provided our CalCap webpage here that has, we have some other programs under the, the CalCap umbrella, and um, you can visit those there. And then we have um, I put our, our CalCap email here. We have staff dedicated to answering questions um, about the CalCap program. Feel free to answer, to send a question if you're looking to determine <coughs> what might be included um, in the loan or um, ideas for which lenders to reach out to. Or um, please please give us give us send us an email and we'll do what we can to help you out. And I, I just we're. Um, well, we try to do what we can to share resources here at CPCFA too. So I provided our Twitter handle here. Um, we like to share the treasurer's resources when we can. And um, if there's other resources that, that you feel would be good for us to share, please email me and we'll see what we can do to help spread the word. And that's, um, I'll take questions at the end, but I think um, I'd like to pass it back to the treasurer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So Miriam, if you wouldn't mind starting, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Ma. Thank you, Assembly Member, for um, having me here today on behalf of the California Alternative Energy and Advanced Transportation Financing Authority. Um, I know that's quite a mouthful, and we are part of the 
uh, State Treasurer's Office, and I'm going to talk to you about two programs that help small businesses financially and support a green economy. Uh, next slide, please. The first program I'm going to talk about is our Small Business Energy Efficiency Financing Program. Um, and whoever's controlling the slide deck, if you wouldn't mind advancing. Thank you so much. Um, so um, we are aware that small businesses right now have a lot of pressure on them. And if you are a small business owner, the last thing you are probably thinking about in this pandemic and economic crisis is your energy efficiency. Um, so we totally understand that. Um, however, for small businesses that are open and operating um, and that do need, that do use energy equipment, um, if your HVAC uh, needs to be replaced or your water heating is not efficient or your lighting, these are all things that if you are able to um, replace them out with more efficient systems, it can really lower operational costs. So for those businesses that do need to make those improvements, um, those businesses can access up to $5 million in financing through our program with extended payment terms. And because our program provides finance companies with a credit enhancement, those finance companies are able to approve a very wide base of businesses, as well as provide better rates and terms than businesses would otherwise qualify for. Um, so who is this program for? Um, it is for small businesses um, who receive their energy from an investor owned utility or a CCA, community choice aggregator in your area, that would be PG&E. Uh, both property owners and businesses who lease their space can qualify. Um, we do not have many industry restrictions. So we welcome nonprofits, houses of worship, restaurants and cannabis growers and processors. Young and newer businesses with less established credit can also apply. Next slide, please. Through this program, businesses can upgrade their entire property or they can finance a single piece of equipment. And the measures can include lighting, refrigeration, HVAC, food service, and more. The financing can also be combined with PG&E's 0% on-bill financing program, which is another great option for small businesses. Um, on the right, you can see an example of a project that we did through our program. Um, a bakery in Southern California, they borrowed $145,000 to do duct sealing and replace hood vents. And through this, they also included non-energy uh, remodeling because our program does allow a certain percentage of the financing to be used for non-energy improvements. Um, if anybody listening is a contractor that um, works on building upgrades, we would love to have you in our program as a contractor provider, either in our small business program or a residential program. So we have another program that we run that helps homeowners um, upgrade their properties and contractors get listed on our site and um, through our program can find customers. If there are small businesses listening who need this type of financing, um, please go to gogreenfinancing.com and that is where you will see our finance companies and their offerings. Next slide, please. Um, the other program I'd like to mention is for manufacturers. This is a sales tax exclusion program and the goal is to support advanced manufacturing in California and this is a way for manufacturers to purchase equipment uh, without having to pay the sales and use tax, which works out to be about an eight to 10% savings off of purchasing depending on sales tax averages at the time. This program is available for startup businesses and expansions and businesses can access up to $10 million of exclusion for each project and have three years to use it. So for example, um, on the slide, a $15 million purchase can save 1.25 million in sales tax. Um, but we have done small projects through this program for purchases as small as um, $500,000 in equipment. There are four pathways for small businesses to qualify for this program. Um, the first is um, alternative source, which is the uh, producers of fuel or energy that replace um, fossil fuels. Um, another is advanced transportation, which is a emerging commercially competitive transportation related technology such as electric cars or aircraft or batteries. Um, there is also recycling, 
which includes companies that utilize or process recycled feedstock. And then finally, advanced manufacturing, um, which is companies that are using a uh, manufacturing process that is more efficient and uses less resources, less energy and water than the industry standard. Um, so just to discuss more um, or learn about eligibility, you can contact us at CAPFA at treasure.gov. And I will put those addresses that I mentioned in the chat box because um, we've got some acronyms and <laughs> some long websites here. And I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Jonathan, CalSavers. Thank you, Treasurer Ma. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jonathan Herrera. I am the Outreach Manager for the CalSavers Retirement Savings Program. Uh, first, really quickly, let me say thank you to Assemblymember Chu's office um, for hosting this meeting today and allowing us to join and share this program with all of you. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, you know, as Miriam said, as business owners, we're, we know that you are facing unprecedented challenges right now. And at CalSavers, we want you to know that we are committed to supporting employers through these uncertain times by offering extra support and flexibility. So CalSavers is the state's new retirement savings program for private sector workers that don't have access to a savings program at work. And while you not, might not be thinking about retirement savings options um, for your employees during the pandemic, I think that you know, as California works to heal our communities and flatten the COVID-19 curve, and of course, safeguard private sector and small business jobs, um, you know, we think it's important to give attention to programs that will strengthen personal economic security and family economic security in the post-virus period. And I think that the COVID-19 pandemic has really underscored how important it is for workers to have access to programs that support their short and long-term financial stability. And CalSavers was designed for exactly that. So first, let me talk to you about how CalSavers came to be. Um, CalSavers was created by legislation back in 2016. Um, and what the legislature was looking at was, was a retirement savings access gap in the state. You know, close to half of Californians are currently projected to retire into economic hardship. Um, and we think that a key driver of that is that there's seven and a half million Californians who are going to work every day and playing by the rules, but lack access to a workplace-based retirement program. Um, and the research shows that, that workers are 15 times more likely to be saving and be on a path towards retirement security if they have access to a payroll reduction savings option at work. So with that in mind, knowing that the best way to get people saving and on a path towards retirement security is through the workplace, the legislature did pass um, a bill in 2016 um, that did a couple of things. Number one, most importantly, it gave us the green light for creating the program. But number two, it did create a new requirement on employers. Um, and that's what this slide is about. So going forward, any business in the state with at least five employees is going to be required to offer some sort of retirement savings program. So if you're not currently offering, you know, something like a 401k or a pension, um, your options are go out on the private market and find a solution for your business that you can sponsor or register for CalSavers um, and facilitate our program for your employees. Um, the deadlines for employer compliance roll out over the next three years based on the size of your business. So don't panic. Most of you won't have to run out and figure it out today. Um, the first deadline um, is coming up a little bit in pretty quickly, though. It's for businesses with more than 100 employees. You'll have until September 30th of this year. That's actually extended. The original deadline was June 30th of this year. But, you know, with everything that's going on in the economy, we wanted to give um, employers a little bit more time to figure it out. Um, the next deadline is for businesses with more than 50 employees. They'll have until June 30th of next year. And then the last deadline is for businesses with five or more employees. They'll have until June 30th of 2022. Um, important to note, though, we launched the program statewide um, July of 2019, and it's open for all eligible businesses. So even if you are, you know, an employer of five or six employees, if you wanted to get started, um, if you're issuing payroll, we can make it easy for you and your employees can start saving right away. Um, if you happen to be a smaller employer, less than five employees, um, uh, you're not subject to the mandate, so you can't register for the program, but we did open the program for individual um, participation. So employees of small businesses, or if you're um, a self-employed contractor, gig worker, um, you can go to our website, calsavers.com, and open an account for yourself and start saving whenever you're ready. Uh, next slide, please. So when that legislation passed, the very first thing that we did was get together a group of stakeholders 
um, from the small business community to tell us what is it about the programs on the existing market that make it difficult for employers to offer this type of program at their, at their place of business. And by and large, they, they'd report these three hurdles. The administrative burden, it takes a lot of research, a lot of ongoing work to keep to sponsor your own plan. Um, there's the fees, um, startup costs and ongoing costs for maintaining your own, your own retirement program. And then, of course, there's a fiduciary liability. So we created CalSavers to address all three of those issues. We want it to be as easy as possible for employers to facilitate. Um, there are no fees for employers um, to uh, facilitate the program for their employees. And then, of course, because employers aren't sponsoring this program, um, you don't have the same fiduciary liability. Um, that fiduciary liability is assumed by um, the board that I work for, chaired by the state treasurer, um, our small staff out of the state treasurer's office, and our contractors who have been contracted to uh, run the day-to-day -day op operations of the program and handle the investment management. Uh, for savers, we wanted it for your employees. We wanted to create something that was simple, portable, and low fee, um, and that starts with a very simple payroll deduction IRA. Um, just like any other IRA that you can get um, from your local financial institution. The key difference is that we are, you know, partnering with you as small business owners to facilitate the automatic enrollment and automatic payroll reduction for your employees that all of the research shows, um, you know, makes it so much easier and so much more likely for workers to be saving and be on a path towards retirement security. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, this is a very high level overview, obviously, of the program. So um, I wanted to make sure that you all knew where you could get additional information. I think I'd want to highlight just three things on this page. Number one is the website, obviously, calsavers.com. We've got tons of resources and program details available, frequently asked questions. Um, the second one I'd want to highlight is the on-site support. I've got a field team, local field team based, you know, with folks based throughout the state who are available to um, answer all of your questions, guide you through the onboarding process, and do presentations for your employees. Um, and the third thing I want to highlight is at the bottom, you'll see that um, we are doing twice weekly webinars um, available for employers to get more information. You know, those typically run about 40 minutes, so we can get really into the details of how the program works. Um, but, you know, we'd love to, to inform you of, you know, not only CalSavers, but of your other options so that you can uh, be prepared to comply with this mandate when you need to, um, but also help you see how easy um, facilitating a program like CalSavers can be. Um, next slide, please. So again, I think it's really important that we, you know, think about, um, you know, how we support our employees or our workers in the state as they come back to work. Um, and part of that includes the ability to save for themselves and for their, their own retirement and economic security. Uh, my information is here on the screen. If you have any questions, we'll be doing questions and answers in just a few minutes after the other speakers. Um, but also our websites and all of our social media pages are here for you to follow and keep track of what we're doing. But thank you so much for letting us spend some time with you today. And um, if you do have any questions, hopefully we can get to them in the questions and answers period. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Treasurer Mara. Uh, thank you, Jenny and Mirian and Jonathan. There was a lot of very important information for, for us. I just wanted to uh, uh, remind you that this uh, uh, town hall will be recorded and posted on my website uh, and, and the Facebook. So if you miss any part of it, feel free to uh, check on my website or, and to share with friends uh, or uh, people you think might need uh, th those information during this difficult time. And uh, uh, next up, I, again, I would like to welcome uh, Marguerite Jackson and Dennis King. Uh, this is the second time they have kindly dedicated their time to do a town hall with, with me. So thank you so much. Um, Marguerite Jackson, like I introduced earlier, is a talk show uh, hostess. And she had a show, uh, Business on the Edge. And uh, I, it was uh, uh, aired on a regular basis. And I was very honored to be on the show for, for many times. So without further ado, please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Margaret Jackson first, and then followed by Dennis King. Margaret, it's all yours. Margaret. 
Thank you. Th thank you, Assemblymember Kansen Chu, and the gracious words. I appreciate that. Um, we certainly support uh, small business. Also, um, uh, State Treasurer Ma, glad to be on with you today as well. You guys are doing some fantastic work. I I'm really glad to hear uh, more about the uh, resources that are available to small businesses, and we'll certainly help support getting that word out um, to our small businesses as well. Um, can you please advance the slide? Thank you. Um, I am the director of the Alameda County Small Business Development Center, and we just kind of wanted to go over some of the resources that are available in Alameda County. We've got some interesting, uh, we get asked a lot about other resources outside of the IDLE and the PPP resources. And, and, and the, the best way to really address that is every city has something different that they may be doing. And um, right now we see that, um, and I'm gonna grab this information right here. Um, San Leandro and the, and the County of Alameda have been um, approved for a disaster assistance uh, due to some of the civil unrest. So with COVID-19, we're also dealing with the civil unrest. And so I was just notified about this a couple of days ago. And so the counties that are uh, eligible for supporting individuals and families, but also small businesses. So those counties include Los Angeles, Contra Costa, Kern, Orange, San Bernardino, San Francisco, San Joaquin, San Mateo, Santa Clara County, Stan Stanislaw, and Ventura. So we're really uh, happy that there's funding and resources available to those businesses that saw, um, unfortunately, maybe some of their property was um, impacted. Uh, maybe there were or, or windows broken or there needs to be some repairs or replacements uh, to the real estate, machinery, equipment, inventory, other assets that were damaged or destroyed in uh, some of the civil, civil unrest that took place on May 26th. So we wanna make you aware of that. And the SBDCs, we are able to help you complete those applications and that information uh, to get you uh, back on track. We want our small businesses to survive. We understand that this is a very difficult time with so much going on, but we are here to support you. And if you want to register and apply for uh, consulting services, you can certainly go out to our website at acsbdc.org. That's Alameda County SBDC.org or acsbdc.org to uh, uh, get to us. Can you please go back to the former slide for Alameda SBDC? And that's, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, another resource that is available, and I'm gonna grab that information. Um, Alameda County has a business adapt ad adaptation grant. So if you are making changes or modifications, uh, that grant is available at EdenUpgrade.org. And that's for the unincorporated area. So we want to make sure the small businesses during this COVID-19 time, during this time, we, we are still seeing businesses um, expand add new employees. So there, there's, I know that we often discuss all of the bad things that are happening, but we're not talking about some of the good things that are happening. We're seeing businesses pivot and innovate and do new things to survive and thrive during this time. And so we're supporting you in that effort as well. And just an update on the IDLE and PPP. The IDLE advance is no longer available. So if you try to apply for that, uh, the funding has run out for that. And just like um, uh, um, State Treasurer Ma stated that money runs out and you're not getting that information. So the IDLE advance funding has run out. However, the, the IDLE loan has not. So SBA is still taking applications for that. If you have not applied for the IDLE advance, please um, work with your local SBDCs and apply. If you're in Santa Clara County, you can work with Dennis King. If you're in Alameda County, you can work with the Alameda County SBDC. The PPP, this is the red flag. Uh, that 
the PPP program ends August 8th. There is, this was, uh, the program was extended from June 30th and it is ending August 8th. So please work with your banks and work with your SBDCs now. Don't wait till August 8th. That's SBA's deadline. Uh, but if you want to apply for PPP, please do it uh, as soon as possible. Work with us and we, we're very good at getting you do that process and working with your banks. And we do understand that not all banks are, are um, making the program as available as we'd like to. Uh, some of the small business, some of them are a little bit smaller, but we can, there's other lenders. And so we can help support that process with you as well. And then SBDC services, our services are, are really expansive. I, I mean, it's really kind of hard to put us in a box. We do not give legal advice, but we can really help you with anything in between. So whatever that goal is, whatever you're trying to do during COVID-19 or otherwise, we're here to support. So if that's starting a business, we can help with all of those steps, those baby steps in between and all of those little things that you're not sure about and how to get connected to those resources that you're not sure about. We have, we have, um, pretty nice size um, uh, advisors and, and consultants that are depth and rich in their um, skill set to help you, to consult with you. So we want to help you with that. Don't go it alone. This is really not a good time to go it alone. We can save many, many more businesses and support your thriving if you work with us because we're, we're not emotionally at Tied, so we're able to give advice and consulting that's more objective that can help you look at different ways to pivot and things that and innovate in ways you might not be thinking about during COVID-19 and during this time of, of unrest. So we want to support you as much as possible. And again, I'm going to turn this over to Dennis King and let him share with you what's going on in Santa Clara County. Thank you. After Margaret's presentation, I think the easiest thing for me to say is amen. <laughs> <laughs> She covered all the bases that were important to cover. But let me share at least a few observations. First of all, uh, thank you, Treasurer Mon. Thank you, Assemblymember Kenson Chu. Uh, you, I greatly appreciate your leadership. I'm sure our listeners can also appreciate the fact that you're two of the very few people in Sacramento with real world business experience. You've gone through this. So you know what it means. You know these struggles. When we were hearing uh, Fiona Ma describe the challenges in terms of government uh, for small businesses, uh, that's not an educational response. It sounds like she's been there. And I think that credibility helps all of us uh, significantly. So thank you for that. Um, the only other, uh, the significant difference between Margaret Jackson's area and ours is simply geography. So she particularly focuses on the small businesses throughout Alameda County. Uh, we focus on Santa Clara County. We often compare notes about programs and resources. Uh, sometimes if our businesses need help with some of the expertise that we might have uh, in our own camps, we are very quick to share that. Again, trying to do whatever we can to get appropriate information and resources to help small businesses. The other significant observation is that all of our workshops are, well, I should say used to be workshops, now webinars, um, and certainly our one-on-one -on -one advising, that's all free. Um, so we want to do everything we can to help facilitate uh, the business owners uh, be successful in terms of getting access to a lot of information. There's been a number of questions about the PPP loans. Um, uh, uh, Margaret is right. The deadline is the 8th of August. Um, our experience with some of the banks is that they actually close even before the deadline. So. I would strongly recommend that if you're considering it, apply, reach out. Um, if there's questions, you can always deal with questions later. Uh, worst comes to worst, you can always turn down a loan. Uh, but I would say, be realistic. The deadline is right around the corner, uh, pursue that. Um, if there's any questions or any doubts about it, uh, certainly reach out to the SBDC, either in Alameda or in Santa Clara County, um, and we'll help you uh, go through that process. Uh, the one message to that is um, it's here for your success. As a 1% loan, uh, it's hard to beat. Um, so really give that serious consideration if you haven't done that. Much of the discussion uh, of the people that we've helped, we've walked through, good heavens, at least 600 small businesses in the last few months, we've walked through that process to get them their PPP loan. 
ketones. Uh, most of the discussions in recent times is not really how to get a PPV loan, but about forgiveness. How do you maximize that? The rules changed again. And as the rules changed, they've been better. Uh, Congress has been listening. And so they've not only made it easier, but also easier to get it forgiven. So whereas previously up to 75% of your loans should be dedicated to payroll, now it's, it's 60%. So there's a number of other uh, stipulations that are making it easier and easier, uh, as I said, not only to qualify for the PPP loans, but also to have it forgiven up to 100%. So seriously, if there's any time to act, now is the time. Uh, Margaret also described the idle loans, economic injury disaster loans are still going on. While the advance on those have passed, the loans themselves are still current. And the plan is that they should be available through the rest of the year, uh, calendar year. Um, however, again, the advice is don't wait. And uh, you, don't, you lose nothing by applying except for your time. So I think these are good options for you to seriously consider. Um, now, in addition to that, there are a number of efforts by local cities. Next week, we're expecting um, Assemblyman Manchu in, in Santa Clara County. Uh, you represent uh, San Jose, a good portion from the Agnew area. Uh, I mean, from uh, Alviso, uh, Berryessa, um, and uh, of course, you do a great job representing our friends in Milpitas. Um, there are some local programs that are about to take place. So I could almost announce them, but not quite in detail. But starting on Tuesday, we're expecting the City Council of Malpitas to fine tune the program again for small business assistance that they should be announcing uh, with our active involvement. Um, uh, probably, as they said, they'll be deciding on Tuesday and it should be available shortly thereafter. Um, with your permission, uh, Assemblyman and uh, Chu, we can get that information to you so they can, um, the people that live in Melpitas in your district uh, can either go to your website or ours for the most current information about that. Is that okay? Definitely, definitely. The city of San Jose is also launching a program to help small businesses. Uh, that should be released sometime at the end of next week We'll be working with the city of San Jose for a rent relief program uh, that will be available from mid to late uh, August. So uh, there's some good things that's still happening uh, as a demonstration that there are a number of your representatives care deeply about the success of small businesses. And that's one of the ways that we've been able to partner up there, again, to channel as many resources as we can to help you get through this, this, uh, this challenge that we're, that we're all facing. Um, there's more to cover, but I think that covers at least the basics uh, for today. All right, thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Dennis. Um, please feel free to use uh, my office as a, a resources, whatever we can do to help out with our uh, local residents, the lo local small businesses. You know, we'll be really, really happy and, and honored to have the opportunity to do it. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your decade-long uh, services to the small businesses. Like I mentioned, you know, they uh, both of them been working on uh, helping out with the small businesses and, and people uh, in the small business for uh, many, many, many years. And again, I would uh, I just remind you that if you miss any part of this presentation, uh, feel free to get onto my website and Facebook uh, and also share that information with whoever you think may, may uh, help them in this situation. Now my staff will be uh, read the questions submitted to us. And we, uh, we, we will do our best to answer all your questions, but if we, due to the time limit, can I answer the questions? Please feel free to reach to, out to my office or any presenter directly uh, after this presentation. And we will definitely have their information on the screen uh, uh, multiple times. So with that, um, please uh, read the first question. Matthew? 
Okay. The PPP loans were not made available to many of us small business owners through our banks, and we are stuck without funding or resources and mounting bills. What sort of reprieve is the state offering for women business owners like me? Margaret, do you want to try a shot? Yes, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't um, overstep anyone that may wanted to respond. Um, that's a great question. Um, and we've seen a, a lot of um, smaller business, micro businesses, um, not really get the funding that we would have liked them to, to see women in uh, minority groups. We, we, we saw a dis, uh, some disparities there. I was on a call yesterday um, that really kind of gave us that, that uh, concrete data for women um, and then African-American communities and Hispanic communities um, by and large did not get the, the funding as, as, uh, as much as um, they should have. And so uh, if, you're, if, if you applied for PPP or you're unable to get PPP, uh, a couple of resources that I would recommend is uh, one, connecting with your local SBDC so we can get you connected to the right lenders. But Working Solutions and California's iBank are working with underserved populations uh, to really um, See so if there's a the, there's an opportunity for you to get the resources and funding that you need. Keep in mind that the idle and the PPP is not the only resources out there. That's one of many. And so if you connect uh, again with your local. SBDCs, we have a, a pulse on some of the things that are going on in our counties, in our communities, uh, resources that are available for um, uh, underserved communities and, and women by the way, is an underserved small business community. And so that's a reality. And so we wanna make sure that we can help you navigate through those waters and get the funding that you need. That's not an S, that was not an SBA um, issue with the PPP. Uh, those are the banks and they're um, going through their protocols or, and, and making the decisions on um, their customer uh, choices or who they're going to, uh, who they're able to lend to. And so we will take a look at your information and we'll be glad to support you. Can I just add, can you hear me? Yes. So I just want to also um, tag team on, on Margaret's uh, um, resource for the iBank. So the iBank also is offering small business loans Initially, they were only offering it to people who did not get a federal PPP or EIDL. They have just opened it back up to anyone, even mm -hmm. if you've gotten the PPP or EIDL, because there is still money in that uh, fund. And the website is www.ibank.ca.gov. And again, my resource guides have uh, different um, grant and loan programs that are offered also by local governments, as well as the private sector. There are many private sector companies that are stepping up uh, to help many of the tech companies. So please go to my website, www.treasure.ca.gov and check out my small business resource guide. Great, thank you. Anybody else want to chat in? Seeing no, let's move on to the next question. Okay. The pandemic is a huge hardship, and this is a nail in the coffin for businesses. Is there a CASP certified access specialist that can be brought on board as a service for businesses to avail so they can get compliance with ADA regulations? ADA regulations. There are a number of other regulations. ADA is part of that within the County of Santa Clara. And the county does have a program and we'll be teaming up with them on a wide variety of areas. Um, ADA, to some extent, uh, we don't have a consultant on board that will look at the physical uh, attributes of a building to determine if it's qualified. But there are a number of other uh, concerns about ADA uh, that our business advisors, in fact, can speak to. Great. Right. 
It, it, I'm just going to add to that really quick. We do have a, um, a resource. Uh, we did do a training on it last year um, with ADA compliance. So, so again, I, I would just encourage you to connect with your local SBDC to help give you the, the information needed. We don't give legal advice. I'd like to stress that, but we can help with getting you the right information for your com ADA compliances. Great, thank you. Next question. Okay. What grants are available to landlords without employees? My bank told me I am not eligible for PPP because more than 50% of my income comes from real estate. Hmm. I think as a landlord, you're available for the EIDL uh, loan. Am I? Yes. Correct. Yeah, that's yes. that's correct, and and and, and the, that's a correct statement that um, landlords are, are um, cannot apply for PPP, but the idle loan they could apply for. It is not a forgivable loan, but um, again, I would I would we're encouraging our our small businesses to apply for everything that's available. Like Dennis said, you can always say no, um, but you have to get your you have to get your um, business in the in the ring there. I think this is why Margaret's advice about reaching out to an SBDC business advisor allow us to work with you is probably most appropriate because think about the PPP. It stands for Paycheck Protection Program. So if you really don't have employees, then that's not a good fit. Um, however, there are other fits that um, other programs that could be a very good fit. So don't just focus on one. Take a look at a number of different efforts that's out there. And, th and that's where I think where we can shine is to say, let's look at your options and then it's up to you to decide uh, how you want to proceed from there. All right. Yeah, the legislatures, we are aware of the uh, the, the pressure on the landlord as well. So there's some bills uh, moving to in the Senate to give some tax credits for the, the, the landlord. And I hope that will offer some help. Next next well, question. To finish one part of that is that the city of San Jose oh. is about ready to launch a program at the end of August, specifically uh, a rent relief that's gonna be directed to landlords. So. There are a number of initiatives in that arena. Uh, and that's why, again, it's good to have that, this kind of conversation because there's, things are changing all the time. Uh, you know, we, I joke about that we pivot so much, we call it rock and roll. Uh, it, it's just things are changing all the time. And that's why it's important to have these uh, discussions with business advisors who are, have got access uh, to what's happening. Great. Anybody want to chime in on this question? Thank you for the question. Now we're moving on to the next one. Can nonprofits apply to these assistance programs? If they're 501c3s, uh, they can apply. If they're 501c6s, for the most part, uh, they have been discouraged to apply. Uh, federal funds usually don't like to go to organizations uh, like Chambers of Commerce that also are lobbying organizations. Um, but again, the safest answer, I, and I know of Chambers of Commerce that have received them, um, as well as some that have not, uh, the best bet is apply. Yeah, and again, on my website, I have a resource guide specifically for nonprofits. And um, the CalCap programs are open to nonprofits, but the CalCap for Small Business and the Collateral Support Program. Okay. All right. Same with the um, Energy Efficiency Financing Program. Cool. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. The EIDL SBA Small Business Loans can the loan be used to pay for items already purchased? 
For instance, I applied in May but gave up on the program and purchased a new laptop in June before I got notification I was approved for the EIDL. Can I use the loan to pay off my credit card that I used to pay for the purchase of the laptop? Or can the loan be used to pay my property taxes on my home? Um, Dennis, I can start if you wanna sure. add. Um, the goal of the EIDL loan and, and the PPPs is um, what was pre-existing, okay? Um, we've had questions like, can I use my idol to put a down payment on my home? No, um, your home, you can't pay property taxes um, in, unless it's your business property. Um, it, and so there's some expenses associated with how you can um, utilize those resources. And um, the guidance is really rupee, uh, rent, utilities, um, payroll and interest. So if it's not one of those things, um, then I would, I would um, steer clear because you don't wanna get in a situation where you've paid for something and you have to, you will be audited. So you don't wanna to have to repay. And um, I would lean towards, and, and we can get a definitive with SBA, but you purchased the, the, the laptop um, it's not a pre-existing um, expense. And so the goals of the CARES Act is really trying to support small businesses of what was there prior to COVID-19 and get you back to that, that place you were prior to, just like insurance prior to uh, the incident, and in this case, COVID-19. So um, with that being said, Den um, Dennis, you want to add to that? Sure. Let me add just a little to it and that the nature, look at the purpose of it. So economic injury disaster loan. So it's basically to help people recover from the bad news of whatever caused them harm. Um, so if this was uh, replacing something that had been uh, damaged before uh, in one form, then I think that's defendable. But it, this is not the time to use that money to go buy a new car, as the example. Uh, it's it's there to help you recover uh, from damages. Um, and within that parameter, uh, you should be able to answer that question yourself. Great, thanks for the question. Can we move on to the next question? If I receive loans through assistance programs and the pandemic has caused permanent closure of my business, would I still have to repay the loan? Yeah, the, the only loans that are forgivable is um, the PPP, and that could be, like Dennis said, up to 100% of that loan, um, but you have other things that you could use that funding for, and then if you do, that 60-40 split that... It, it, Prior to the 60-40 split, it was 75% and 25%. And um, uh, SBA came back and said, okay, we're going to do 60% payroll, 40% rupee. And then that 40% is at a 1% um, payback. Now, uh, idle is 3.75%. And then, of course, for nonprofits, it's 2.75%. And, and none of the idle loans are forgivable. If you got an idle advance, that's forgivable. So if you got those resources, you do not have to pay that back. But the idle loans, um, unfortunately, that's the way uh, it's written currently. We don't know and everything is ever changing, whether or not that's going to change. In, in those types of cases, we, we don't know. We don't, we don't have any guidance at this time. And there hasn't been any change to the laws surrounding the idle and PPP uh, re uh, funding. All right, do we have uh, time for another question? Uh, yes, we do, I think, yeah. Besides a SBA loan, is there any other forgivable loans for small business without employees with only, or with only independent contractors? I'm not aware of any at this moment. Uh, that doesn't mean that something will not come out, but at the moment, um, what we have is the idle advance, uh, which is closed now, and then the PPP. So um, 
unless Dennis has something uh, he wants to add to it. Um, right now, unless yeah. there's grants out there that your community may be supporting, I would look at that, um, those opportunities as well. In, in one sense, I have to laugh at myself because for, for many, many years now, with, with different inquiries, I tell people, there's no free money. You know, you have to pledge something. Uh, but uh, why I'm laughing is because in recent months, a number of the local cities have been offering just that. So what I would ask of the questioner is, where are you? And take a look at some of the things that's going on in your county and in your local community. Um, I strongly suspect that within the next a couple of weeks, both Melpitas and San Jose will have programs that could probably uh, fit uh, that criteria. Um, so things are evolving all the time. And uh, again, I'll get back to you in terms of we are able to get that information released. Um, and so there are, there are some funds available, but it certainly, it, it does take some effort uh, to be aware of them. And here's another, um, possible option under the pandemic unemployment assistance. Uh, it is under the EDD uh, Employment Development Department, www.edd.ca.gov. Self-employed workers, independent contractors, and gig workers uh, may qualify for unemployment benefits, up to 39 weeks of benefits through December 26, 2020. So initial benefits were 167 dollars per week. EDD increased the payments up to $450 per week based on your 2019 income. So please also log into the EDD website to see if you qualify as an independent contractor, self-employed, or a gig worker. Great. Thank you, Treasurer Ma. Any uh, t time for another question? Unfortunately, that's all the questions we have time for today. Okay, but uh, again, uh, we will answer your question um, through uh, other means of communication. And, and thank you so much for uh, Theona Ma and all the, your staff and the uh, Margaret Jackson and Dennis for taking the time. And also wanna thank all, all of you for participating in the Zoom meeting. And thank you so much for your uh, questions. Uh, we are ready to assist you, so please do not feel free to reach out to any one of us if you have any uh, uh, further questions or you need uh, further assistance. And uh, you can find the contact information. Um, and, and again, this one will be posted on my website and the Facebook. At uh, this time, Treasure Ma, would you like to say a few closing words? Well, again, thank you, Assemblymember Chu, for your leadership. And um, we have adopted the four W's in my office. Number one, wear your mask. Number two, wash your hands. Number three, watch your distance. And number four, we are all in this together. So please stay safe, protect yourself, and protect others during this pandemic. And we hope to see you soon in person when we are allowed to. Thank you. Four W's. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Kenton. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs>